Good day, fellow deal makers. We have seven minutes on the clock, and today we're going to talk about film finance, investing in films. Uh, and today we have uh, Nicholas coming on the show to tell us more about film finance. So, what is it? How do you do it? What are the ups, the downs? Give us an idea of what it is, man. Well, thank you so much, Josh, for having me on the show. So, film finance is a very deep rabbit hole that a lot of people don't know very much about, um, and you know, and rightfully so. You know, my my my. Uh, physical title is executive producer. Uh, there are only statistically, there are only about a hundred thousand people in the entire world that that, that actually do what I do. Um, and uh, and surprisingly enough, not even the majority of them, you know, live in America because there's all you know, there's India, there's you know, China, there's a bunch of different other places. Um, so, but essentially, what an independent film uh, would be classified as is a movie made outside of the studio system. Uh, you know, so um, not Paramount, not Universal, not, you know, not Warner Brothers or any of those others. Now, you might see some of those on there because, say, for example, like uh, you can have an independent that is with Warner Brothers, but it's not Warner Brothers, the studio, it's Warner Brothers distribution. So we can still access all the same distribution that they can access. However, we just don't make it in the studio. We make it independent of the studio. And then once we have the movie, then we sell it to the distribution. Um and a lot of these, they go on a worldwide scale. You know, they might not have as big of a release in the United States, but they'll go make bank overseas. And that's kind of, you know, that's kind of where the majority of the, the money comes from. Um, it is, uh, you know, a lot of people think that this is a very risky type of investment, um, you know, but they don't realize that there's multiple different types of investments. And a lot of the one thing that I always tell investors is uh, when you're considering this, uh, think about it in terms of a restaurant. If you have a restaurant, um, you know, that's say two startups and you have one guy that has never had a restaurant before and he has a brand new concept that's pretty cool. Um, and then on the other side of the table, you had another guy who has 14 existing successful restaurants already an approving track record, he can find all the best cooks, he can find all the best people. Which one of those people would you invest in? You know, Even. but it's still a startup. It's still that that huge, you know, that huge percentage for failure, you know, but that guy has already done it 14 times. So that, you know, that percentage kind of changes. And so that's, um, you know, IMDB is a really good resource for trying to figure out, you know, what exactly their their credits are. Um, IMDb Pro uh, is now owned, uh, I think, by Amazon, and so you can find people's contact information on there, and you know, and other things like that, and reach out to investors that way. Um, you know, but but essentially, the way that it goes, um, you have two different types of uh, of investments. So you have development investment, uh, which is in business, it would be uh, equal to the pre-seed money. And then you have your budget investment, which is an investment everybody knows and loves, which is, you know, you, you put the money into the movie, we use that money to go make the movie, and then it gets distributed and you get money back. Um, development, though, is much safer. It's generally from 30000 to 50000 uh, depending on the budget of the movie, obviously higher budgets, you know, like right now I got a $25 million movie. It's a quarter of a million for the development for that one, but that's because it's $25 million. There's, there's a lot more that has to go on. Um, you know, but even for like the 1.5, $2 million, $3 million movies, you know, 30,000 would take care of that. Um, you know, and so what, what ultimately happens is you put up that money, uh, we'll go through a process of development, in which case we will, we'll get a, a, a line producer uh, that will do the budget and the schedule. Uh, we will uh, bring on a casting director so that we, we can check the availability of every, you know, of everybody, all the name actors and everybody and see who we can get. Um, one of the biggest parts about this is that we bring on my company, Mixed Slate Productions, personally brings on uh, people that that own and or are very, very high up at, um, you know, different distribution companies and we hire them on the team. And so then instead of trying to guess at what the market wants, we go to them and they say, you know, not only are you going to give us the projections, but you're going to read the screenplay and you're going to tell us what actors are selling, which ones are worth the most value in the market for the entire world. And then on top of that, um, I want to see, a, you know, a list of directors. And then what we do is we take all these lists and we bring them to the casting director and they go see who's available out of that list. 
And then we fill in the casting for the rest of it. So it's already, you know, and not to mention, we're basically going to them and we're telling them if you want, you know, if we could make the most perfect movie in the world for you, uh, what would it look like? Who would be in it? How would it be? And then we go make that movie. So obviously, immediately they're interested and we start a bidding war on these on these contracts and it ends up making, you know, quite a bit of money. But the only way that you could lose any kind of money with development is like um, if it doesn't get funded. What you know, and my my contract is in that budget, so it's going to get funded, <laughs> you know, you know, uh, you know, because that's my paycheck there. But um, but that's that's the way it is. Just the same way we pay out the camera or we would pay out, you know, for the rentals or anything like that. It's, it's your, your investment plus 20% and you're out of it before we even shoot a single frame. Um, there's a lot, seven minutes is not enough time to, <laughs> to go over, you know, the entire thing. Sure, sure, sure. Seven minutes does go fast. And, and we, we put these deals to kind of give people a high level overview and to spark their interest. So as, as people are going through and they're interested in maybe being a part of a film, investing in a film, you said that there are some uh, good, really, you know, uh, safety nets, tax incentives and, and such like that. Maybe give us one or two tips on that. And then where could people go to connect with you and maybe do a film financing deal? Okay. Um, so a lot of the things with the with the tax incentives, um, de- every state has them. You can go to um, Entertainment Partners website, uh, which is ep.com, and they have a place for tax incentives. You can see the tax incentives for every single state uh, because they they do change on a pretty regular basis. Um, and um, and with pre sales, that's one thing. That's what film markets are for. Film festivals and film markets. They you know uh, sales agents and different distributors go to those types of things. Um, if you do want to learn more, uh, my company, Mixed Slate Productions, if you go to mixedslateproductions.com, uh, we have right now, currently we're revamping the website, but we have a little, uh, you know, we have a little um, information page uh, about the different types of investments. And then, of course, you can always reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, it's Nicholas Capone, spelled just like Al Capone, but C-A-P-O-N-E. Cool. Hey, thanks for telling us about the world of film finance. Uh, fellow dealmakers in the audience, as always, reach out to our guests, say thanks for being on the show, and uh, find a way to connect with them and learn more. Their contact information will be in the show notes below. And if you would like to come on the show and talk about your deal in seven minutes or less, head on over to thedealscout.com, fill out a quick form, and maybe get you on the show next. Till then, talk to you all on the next episode. Cheers.